Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Roofing Contractor Walls and Ceilings Legal Insights q and I'm Roofing Contractor Editor Art Eisner, and I'm very happy to be joined today by Roofing Contractor Editorial Director Rick D'Amato, and our special guest, as always, Trent Cotney, CEO of Cotney Attorneys and Consultants. Uh, Trent, as always, uh, glad you're here to walk us through some of the biggest issues facing the roofing and construction in, uh, industries, whether they're legal or not. Uh, there's been just a few minor, you know, news events <laughs> since we last <laughs> spoke, none less important or significant than uh, your hometown Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning the Super Bowl. So I have to say, congratulations. Go Bucks! <laughs> Go Bucks! <laughs> just tell us for uh, all those disgruntled Lions fans like myself, or maybe a Bills fan out there, what's it feel like to be in the hometown of winning Super Bowl city? It, it's good. You know, all those bets I lost throughout the year, you know, that I've got a lot of, a lot of roofing friends up in Chicago and uh, we, we bet on that game. I ended up losing the money went to the foundation up there, the CRCA foundation, which is fine, but now I get to kind of rub it in now. So it's, it's well worth it. <laughs> all right. Good to know. Good to know. Well, the other news uh, kind of captivating the nation uh, since then, obviously uh, the impeachment trial of former president Trump, which resulted in an acquittal, but still a strong rebuke from key Republicans. Uh, you know, my question uh, drills down into how this relates to the roofing industry, which historically has shown very strong support for both the GOP and the former president. Uh, I'm wondering if you think, you know, will the construction industry be a battleground in what looks like an emerging uh, and continued divided GOP? So, you know, Rick and Art, that, that, um you know, impeachment trials was very interesting and there were no surprises there. I mean, that, that you knew that that was probably going to happen. Um, I, I honestly expected a little more theatrics and a little more playing it out a little bit more, but uh, I don't think the outcome was really, you know, suspect. So as far as how this affects the industry, um, my biggest concern is not whether or not the roofing industry will be polarized within the GOP. Like I think that there are pros and cons, you know, depending on whether you are pro Trump or maybe more a moderate uh, Republican, depending on what your key issues are. So for example, um, you know, uh, immigration has been, was fairly tough under the Trump administration. You know, that's, that's one thing that depending on where you're at, it could potentially affect you. What's interesting though, is that, this impeachment trial, even though it wasn't overly lengthy, it did delay something that was really big for construction. And that is uh, the build better plan that um, Biden had suggested come, suggest that he uh, start get some infrastructure out there, the build, I guess the build back better plan. And the idea behind this is it was $2 trillion that's going to be dumped into infrastructure improvement, uh, not just commercial, but the goal was to try to tie some residential into that as well. That's going to be pushed off now, and I would be. I think we might still see something like that in the spring, but really, that's kind of what I took away from this: is that to me, it was a political distraction, and I think there are more important things that we as an industry need to be focused on right now, namely, you know, getting this infrastructure bill out there to you know get more uh, work available for roofing contractors and those in, in you know the walls and ceilings industry. Wow. So if uh... What about in terms of the, the approach to how the roofing industry and construction industry now lobbies on Capitol Hill and the importance of really kind of knowing your audience, given, uh, given what you just talked about? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it is. And I've, I've joked around before on this. You know, I'm a point A to point B kind of guy. You guys know me, right? So right. politics is not that way. It's just not. It, it is. It's like a fluffy cloud. And you've got to figure out, you know, where you can attack, right? So we had a great game plan together um, last year that we helped implement. Uh, the Department of Labor Secretary last year, Secretary Scalia, was very favorable to construction. And we were able to make a lot of, of good gains, a lot of good policy decisions. I was really liking what we're seeing. Um, I can tell you under the Biden administration, as it relates to the Department of Labor, regardless of whether it's OSHA or wage and hour, we are now taking and we're suggesting that our customers do the same, take a more defensive tactic, okay? I do not think that there is going to be a lot of opportunity for us to make meaningful suggestions or revisions 
um, with this administration. But I do think there's opportunity to be heard and possibly help navigate the extensive rulemaking that I think is going to come up. Where I do think that there is is some you know silver lining to it is the immigration policy. I mentioned that before. I really think that this is a chance for us to uh, create some favorable immigration uh, paths for people to get into the industry and show them that path to citizenship. Um, I also think you know workforce development is going to be big, as well as uh, renewable energy. And we'll probably talk about that a little bit as more as well. So. What I would say, Art, is, is it's not business as usual. You know, you have to pick your battles. Instead of attacking by land, we now attack by sea, but we're still attacking. Okay. Well, and speaking of uh, speaking of that attack, if you will, <laughs> perhaps that's the wrong wording to use. <laughs> but uh, uh, with Roofing Day coming up, you know, I uh, we both participated before, uh, and I know that uh, you know for me, part of the draw was being in that DC environment, being part of the wheels. Uh, of government and that process moving forward. Uh, this year will obviously be removed. I, I'm also kind of, uh, because it has to be virtual due to the pandemic, but thinking a little bit long-term, given the security situation that happened at the Capitol, do you think, uh, you know, uh, will we have access like that again to our legislators and how will that kind of change uh, the impact of, uh, of Roofing Day and other lobbying efforts? Yeah, it, it, they, the Capitol riots were, you know, personally, it's very tough for me to see that. It's it's hard having been there for past briefing days and other events. You know, I, I'm usually up in D.C. pre-COVID. I was up there four or five times a year for various things, and it, it is it's very difficult to see that on TV. Um, you know, I do anticipate that there will be heightened security. I don't know whether or not what the future will look like. I don't know if we will have the same amount of unfettered access that we did before. I know for this roofing day, it's all virtual, obviously. So, you know, we'll still get access. Our voices will still be heard. I think there will still be a conduit for us to be able to do that. But I don't think you're going to see the, the freedom of travel that we had maybe in past events uh, when it reopens again. Got it. Uh, Rick, I'm going to toss it to you. Thanks, Art. And thank you, Trent, for being here. And uh, thanks to, to our, our viewers. We, pre we appreciate you all joining us. A roofing contract to, to delve into these things. Um, I want to stick with Washington for just a minute. Just one more question. Uh, now that the, the uh, impeachment trial is mercifully over in a short period of time and Washington begins to get back to work, um, what uh, kind of pre uh, COVID relief uh, action are you seeing up there now and what do you think is going to happen next? So Biden's $1.9 uh, trillion um, stimulus bill is still in play, right? And he's basically said, I think, you know, there was an attempt to reach across the aisle to try to gain some, some common ground with Republicans. Uh, I think he switched gears now, and I think he's just looking to kind of march it through. And uh, I anticipate that that's going to happen. The reason is, is that unemployment benefits are going to expire in the next month or so. Um, so I would anticipate that uh, you'll see it pass through the House quickly. It may be, there may be some uh, uh, procedural aspects in the Senate that slows it down, but ultimately I see it going through. If I had to say, I'd say sometime within the next month, you'll, you'll see it. Uh, now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. You know, I, it, it concerns me, the constant printing of money. Um, you know, I think we're kicking the can to a certain extent. But, uh, you know, there is some positive stuff that comes out of that bill. You know, one thing that, that concerned me, Rick, in looking at it, at least from the roofing standpoint and from the walls and ceilings industry standpoint, is the return of, of the Family First Coronavirus Response Act to, to, uh, through September. And what concerns me there is, is uh, it provides additional paid time off, additional leave for COVID-19 related reasons for employees, which is all good in and of itself but it creates a big administrative burden on contractors. A lot of the phone calls we get is just not knowing what's what, how do they apply for credits? Well, how does this work? And uh, I think there was a big sigh of relief when it expired last year. The current stimulus plans that I'm seeing has that renewed one in there. Not only is it in there, but they're talking about uh, increasing the amount of payment and also increasing the week times off from 12 weeks to 14 weeks. So 
caused me a little bit of concern there, but like everything, there'll be a lot of horse trading and we won't know what it is until the dust settles. Well, I think like uh, a lot of folks in this country, I'm a little weary of politics right now and I'm really anxious for Washington uh, to get to work doing, doing the things we need them to do. Uh, no matter what your, what your political beliefs are, I just wish they'd get back to work so we can get back to doing what we do. You know, we are in the roofing business. So uh, mm -hmm. let's talk about roofing for just a minute as it relates to legal. Uh, I'm always curious about something. Uh, Trent, a kind, of a, kind of a closed ended question to start what I want to follow up with in just a second. What's the number one division in construction as it relates to litigation between owners designers, architects, engineers, and contractors. Definitely, you know, D7 roofing, There, there's a lot. Number uh, one, number one, right? Yeah, and uh, the reason- I, I, I only say that out loud because I think a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, it's been this way since I've been in the business. Mm -hmm. And you can tell by my face, I'm old. I've been in the business a while. It's always been this way. And I've just been curious, you know, that being the case, uh, what are the types of cases your firm is working on behalf of a roofing contractor and what's trending. Right. So um, as you guys know, we're a data driven company, right? I, I look at the data every Monday and from that, I give action items to our various divisions, um, our marketing, wherever else, so that we stay on top of whatever the current trends are. Uh, our litigation is ticking upwards. We are approaching, rapidly approaching. We might even be it as of today, but as of Monday, we were at 396 active litigation cases or an arbitration. You know, I consider it a different venue, but basically the same thing. And the majority of those cases, these are cases that involve roofing contractors and either we're prosecuting claims or we're defending claims. And the, by a long shot, the majority is scope of work related. And uh, there's a lot of delays in there. Um, the, the stat on delays is continuously increasing. I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe it was about 42% of those cases involve some kind of delay claim or delay defense um, and just a lot of scope of work related issues. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm constantly advocating for, you know, making sure that you take time to really drill down in your scope of work. You know, the, there's an art to estimating. There's an art to bidding properly, to not just look at the legal, but to understand What's in, your pro what's in your contract and what's not in your contract and make sure that you put that down there. So to, what concerns me is, is this trend upward, okay? And the industry itself has been very strong and that's a good thing. But when I start to see this uptick, a lot of it is driven by the fact that the money is starting to dry up on the higher end, right? It's starting the developers, the owners, and that's usually what causes these types of claims, right? I mean, sometimes they're legitimate. I mean, don't get me wrong. Of course, I'm biased to the roof contractor, but at the end of the day, that's how litigation increases is because money solves all problems, okay? When the money's not there, there's a lot more problems. And that's, that's what I'm starting to see. You know, I, don't, I wouldn't say yet that there's a direct correlation to that, but we have had a marked increase since January 1. I mean, it's, it's gone up significantly. Like I said, we're approaching 400, so... That, that to me is significant. Well, I want to straighten one thing out. In those years, uh, the, the years that I've been in the business, a lot of claims against roofing contractors and manufacturers were related to system failures. Uh, and I really don't have a sense, I haven't for a while, uh, this has been the top issue. Um, how do you see that as it relates to the number of lawsuits? Yeah, so there is a fair, a fair amount of, um, you know, uh, just to put it in general terms, I think your term is, is a good one, system failure, you know, without saying whose fault is whose. Um, and oftentimes, you know, everybody gets dragged into the, to the, the soup bowl, you know, you, all end, you end up being all in there and everybody's pointing fingers at each other. Um, I'm a big believer in, in trying to fly in the same direction uh, to the extent that you can. Um, so it, it is definitely an issue um, where we are really, seeing a lot of uptick is in uh, scope and spec related issues that are very specific about what is included and what is not to be included in a contract. So while there are roof system failures, you know, that may be designed, may be manufactured, may be install, as there's still, still, there's always going to be issues, right? Where we're seeing the biggest growth are 
in these types of claims saying, you know, this contract included uh, X number of penetrations. Why didn't you include this in your bid? Ambiguities in contracts, um, you know, drainage related issues, who accounts for drainage, um, you know, uh, uh, moisture content uh, and decking, decking replacement related. It's all scope related. So a lot of the stuff comes out of there and, and where it ends up being a problem is in uh, refusal to pay for change orders or uh, in requests for information that have been denied from architects or engineers, that kind of thing. And that's, that's the trend that I'm watching closely because oftentimes in the past, in 2009, 10, 11, I remember seeing these claims uptick Right. And the reason was, is because the money had dried up. So they're coming up with whatever they can to to try to keep that extra payment from, you know, skyrocketing. So we're watching this closely. Obviously, two months is not enough time for us to really gather the kind of data that we need to say, OK, this is a definite trend. But if this continues for another two months, then I'm coming back to you guys and I'm saying, look, here's what's happening. Writing's on the wall. I think this is a significant issue. Well, it's. Uh, always, at least in the back of our minds, it's always something that if there's tr something trending, we need to tell our readers and, and viewers about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned moisture in decks, specifically uh, moisture in concrete decks. Does that continue to be an issue that you see? It is to a certain extent. Um, you know, you can usually spec around that to where it's not going to be an issue. There are techniques that, that can be used to where you can take that problem out of the mix altogether. Um, but the not all together, but you can help remediate it. Uh, the bigger issue that, that we're seeing is uh, when architects or engineers insist on a, ter a certain type of system that may not be appropriate for that type of, of roof deck or that type of uh, geographic area. So we're really having to get in the weeds on it. This is not uh, this is not you know roofing litigation 101. This is a 301 type course, and it really is is getting into the complexities of it. But uh, you know through that, I think what we're able to kind of see is is gather a lot of different expert level data that's giving us valuable information that we in turn can then use for the industry overall. So that's kind of how I look at it. Is every Every single litigation that we have, every single arbitration we have, it gives us a chance to really see what's going on out, out in the field and how it worked or how it failed. And that is valuable information because it allows us to kind of make sure we're addressing is certain issues in contracts or advising certain contractors on the back end after we see stuff. Of course, one of the, one of my, the hobby horse I've been riding for several years now and probably will be until I'm gone. Uh, is workforce development. And part of that is training, bringing new people into the business. Um, you know, and, and the install piece uh, always is going to become one of the things that becomes an issue there. Um, as it relates to system performance, you know, liability, how important is workforce development and really in training uh, the installers when it comes to you facing facing Mr. Plaintiff in the court. How important is that? Critical. It's absolutely critical. I mean, you know, it, it is for the listeners that are listening to this, you know, most most of you are probably similar to me where you're a business owner or you may be involved in the business aspect of it. You may be on the roof, you may not be, but for the people that are actually installing, that is is where the rubber hits the road. And that's not just with litigation, it's with OSHA, it's with everything. So properly training those people, investing in those people and, and the equivalent of an apprenticeship so that they understand how to install, they understand the business aspects of it, right? And to me, that's important because you want to invest in those, in those workers and bring them through all the way up to the level, hopefully where you're at now, right? The goal is, is to have them continue to move through the process so that they stay in the industry and they recognize that there's value in learning. Um, so I, I can't stress that enough. Obviously, just like you, Rick, it is a passion project of ours. Uh, we, we are working diligently to um, focus, especially on the high school level. Um, I really want to make sure that every high school student out there knows that roofing is a great profession filled with great people that will you know, uh, pay the bills for a very, very long time. And uh, that's, that's going to be one of the things that we're definitely focusing on in 2021. 
Well, I appreciate that. What else are you hearing from your, your contractor clients? Yeah, so scary thing this week, right? With all the snowstorms, we've had a lot of calls about uh, roof collapses, um, you know, problems with snow removal. And um, for the listeners out there, you know, one of the things I'd like to tell you is snow removal is a great way for you to make extra money, right? There's a lot, if you're in Chicago, if you're in the Northeast, you, a lot of your crews might be idle right now just doing training. You can pick up some good money doing snow removal, but here's the problem. There's a lot of liability with that, right? Because you get people that are just willy nilly scraping stuff off a roof, you may inadvertently damage the roof, you may exacerbate ice damming problems, depending on what you're doing. Um, so oftentimes what I recommend is creating a separate company to do the snow removal, just like I would say, have a separate company to do blue roofs or tarps, do the same thing. That way you're limiting your, your liability. The other thing I would say, Rick, is you got to make it absolutely clear in your proposal that there is no warranty. I'm only doing this. You agree you're not holding me liable for any damage to your roof. This is what I'm doing. But getting that snow off your roof is going to be critical. And in these areas like New Orleans and Houston and places that don't normally have snow, they're not built for that kind of stuff, right? You got to make sure that you're, you're engaging in that kind of maintenance. So those are the calls. We've had a couple of roof collapses. That's always a very scary thing. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Uh, but that's, that's the phone calls we've been getting here lately. Mm -hmm. Tough winter uh, all the way around. All right, thank you, Trent. And Art, I'm going to toss it back to you. Thanks, Rick. Uh, Trent, quick follow up on that. So, uh, if you are in a situation, uh, obviously the snow removal can be an emergency uh, uh, situation. How quickly could uh, should contractors, if they take your advice, how quickly could they scale up creating their own snow removal, you know, entity? And I guess that may matter on a that may depend on a state by state basis. But is it possible to have that up and running in just a few weeks, even this season? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I just created a company in Florida. So, uh, you know, I'm being facetious, but really it doesn't take much. You can do it online, backfill the rest. And here's the thing is you got, if you got idle crew, right. Or they're, you know, sweeping the office, whatever, send them out there with a shovel and I'm knock off some, some snow, you know, you may, it's a good way to make extra money. And, and you're also making those connections, right. You're talking about customer acquisition costs, what better way? I mean, nobody wants to get on a roof and shovel snow. If you're a homeowner, why not sub that out to someone that can do it for a fraction of the cost? And not just that, I mean, you can go ahead and do the driveway, do everything else. And it sounds stupid, but it's a great way to keep your workers occupied. And it's a great way to potentially, you know, acquire those customers for a fraction of the price that you would normally have to pay a marketer for. All right, sage advice as usual. Uh, I am glad you brought up the data. I do, uh, I do want to bring up again. Obviously, uh, uh, so thankful for your involvement in our annual uh, state of the industry report uh, and your column, uh, both of which uh, are now currently on roofingcontractor.com and within our top five most popular stories. In case you didn't know. Uh, no real surprise there. I guess uh, uh, your column really highlights the emerging importance of renewable energy under the Biden administration. You touched a little bit on this earlier. Uh, we've seen the stock market react. We've seen a lot of momentum kind of start already. Where do contractors start if they want to try to maximize this opportunity? Okay, three things. Okay, I'll give it, I'll give it to you. First thing is Contact your local power company, okay? See what uh, rebates and, and credits are available. They may have it at their fingertips, okay? Check with your, the second thing is check with your state and uh, local and federal government on, on what tax credits are available that you can pass on to the owner, the end user, right? And that helps sell the roof. Uh, and the third thing is, is, is solar. Solar is already out there. Solar and roofing have been like this forever. Solar is a great way to get into that market. Um, a lot of the products that are coming out now, especially integrated, um, are easier sells. Um, so that's something that I would definitely look into. Um, it's, it's a great way to provide value add. And if, we, if what I anticipate is going to happen, which is going to be uh, renewed credits and renewed rebates and, and you know, a lot of money available for this kind of stuff, you need to start gearing up now, right? It's not, don't wait till they say, okay, it's ready. Go ahead and start gearing it up now so that when that happens, you've got that capability to go ahead and mobilize and do that kind of stuff. All right, great advice. Uh, and of course, we're looking forward to the State of the Industry webinar at 2 p.m. Uh, this Thursday, February 18th. Uh, Trent, I got a glimpse of John Kenney's presentation a little bit earlier this week. Uh, what, do, what do you hope contractors are gonna get out of that? 
So for those of you that don't know John Kenny, he is, I've known him for more than 20 years now. He, he is the uh, uh, roofing guru. You know, he, he, I always say he went from, you know, the rooftop to the boardroom. He's, he started off as a, uh, uh, a laborer with, you know, a union outfit in New Jersey, uh, worked his way up, you know, estimator, chief estimator, vice president, chief operating officer. So he's seen it all for 45 years. He's, he's been in the industry. And what he's going to do is not only go over some of the survey results, but talk about what the future looks like. You know, what, what he's hearing from uh, contractors. And um, I always, you know, I, there's not a day that goes by. There's probably not an hour that goes by that I don't learn from John. I'm really lucky to have him here because I, I'm constantly asking him questions and it, it's like a walking encyclopedia of roofing knowledge. So it's, it's been, it's great. And I encourage everybody to listen to it. I know we'll all be there. So I'm looking forward to it. Okay, well, thank you Trent for your insight today and uh, for all you do for the roofing and construction industries. Where can people find out more? They can go to cottonycl.com. Feel free to email me at tcotney at cottonycl.com. All right. And again, if you're looking to register for the State of the Industry webinar, do so on our homepage at roofingcontractor.com, where you'll also find the latest news and information the industry has to offer. For our walls and ceilings audience, uh, please visit wconline.com for comprehensive coverage of the interior construction industry there. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.